My name is Stuart Simmons, and on behalf of my co-authors, this presentation represents an update on the geoscientific understanding of the Utah Forge site. For any of you who have been following our progress, three new wells have been completed since the start of 2021, including the deep deviated well plus two vertical wells, all of which are drilled to almost three kilometers depth. The main purpose of this talk is to highlight some of the key findings over the last two to three years that frames current studies and underpins future R&D. The outline of this presentation covers the location and site, surface geology, geophysical surveys, groundwater, reservoir rocks and fracture patterns, and work in progress. At the end, a few slides will be shared that provide guides on accessing information, apps, and data sets through the Utah Forge website. The EGS site, known as Utah Forge, is situated in the North Milford Valley, about four kilometers west of Roosevelt Hot Springs. The hydrothermal system that supplies conventional geothermal power production for the Blundell plant is bounded by the Opal Mound Fault, and to the west of it, the thermal gradient is conductive. Accordingly, beneath Utah Forge, the underlying hot dry rock reservoir between two and three kilometers depth ranges from 175 to 225 degrees Celsius, and it is hosted by crystalline granitoid. The area of conductive heat flow covers greater than 100 kilometers square. The crystalline host rock contains a densely spaced multi-directional fracture network. In terms of permeability, however, the host rocks remain very tight and thus resemble conditions expected at deep levels in the crust elsewhere in the world. Looking at the map on the left, the Utah Forge site is located in southwestern Utah and it can be reached by driving south from Salt Lake City in about three and a half hours. The map on the right represents the geology and we will return to this in a couple of slides. But first, let's look at the site and the layout of wells and well pads. This overview photograph shows the site looking to the northwest. 16A78-32 is the deep deviated well, and the white dashed line marks the trajectory of the subhorizontal leg. All the other wells are vertical, and they are drilled from 1,000 to over 9,000 feet depth, and these are used for seismic monitoring. In the bottom right corner, you can see the drill rig on the 78B-32 pad. In this north-looking view of the site, the sequence of drilling is illustrated, noting that the underlying cross-section has strong horizontal exaggeration. The first well to be drilled was 5832, and this was completed in 2017. In 2019, wells 6832 and 7832 were drilled. At the end of 2020, 16A78-32 was completed, followed by wells 5632 and 78B-32 in 2021. Returning to the geological map on the right, a few key features are pointed out. First, the Utah Forge site sits on the upper reaches of alluvial fan deposits that extend westward from the foothills of the Mineral Mountains. These unconsolidated sedimentary deposits are represented by pale yellow-brown colors. On the far east, the Oligocene-Miocene age plutonic rocks that make up the reservoir are exposed through the core of the Mineral Mountains, and these are represented by the yellow-green color. The pale blue color in the south-central part of the map represents a raft of Precambrian gneiss. And these red to purple colors represent young rhyolite flow dome complexes that form between 0.5 
and 0 0.9 million years ago. Structurally, there are three main fault structures. From west to east, we have the Mineral Mountains West Fault System, which trends north-south and terminates south of the Utah Forge site. There is the Opal Mound Fault, which trends north-northeast and extends for about 7 kilometers in strike length. And lastly, there is the east-west trending Mag Lee Fault. These faults all have small offsets of less than 20 meters as far as can be inferred from field relationships. There is a fourth fault which marks the basement contact and is more easily represented in cross-sectional views coming up in the next slides. Regionally, Gravity and seismic reflection data show the geometry of the basin. The main point is the nature of the gently westward dipping ramp that forms the basement contact. This is the fourth fault, and it is inferred to have accommodated much of the extension across the valley during uplift and exhumation of the Mineral Mountains Pluton. We come back to the geological map to show the trace from northwest to southeast of the geological cross-section that extends from A to A prime. The extent of the granitoid which hosts the EGS hot dry reservoir is now clearly seen. The basement contact is shown as a smooth westward dipping ramp, but we know from 3D seismic reflection that the surface undulates gently. The drilled wells provide important stratigraphic control. A critical attribute of the project is the anomalous conductive heat flow directly beneath the Utah Forge site. The next two slides help to elaborate the thermal structure of the region. Geothermal prospecting in the North Milford Valley dates back to the 1970s. As a result, a number of shallow to deep wells were drilled and these provide the basis for interpreting regional heat flow and the thermal structure. This plan view map shows the temperature contours at 200 meters depth. Hydrothermal convection is localized east of the Opal Mound Fault, and the shape of the contours show hot water leakage through subsurface aquifers around the northern tip of the structure. These maps show the deep thermal structure at 2 and 3 kilometers depth. Combined with the recent results of drilling, a high quality 3D understanding of the thermal structure exists. From these, we know that there is a large region of conductively heated rock covering an area of greater than 100 kilometers squared. Switching to the other geophysical data sets, the 3D Seismic Reflection Survey provides confidence in the contours on the basement contact directly beneath the Utah Forge site. And images from this data set are shown in the middle and upper left corner of the slide. In the bottom right corner, the 3D isometric view is a product of detailed gravity analysis that constrains on a broader scale the regional geometry of the basement contact. Groundwater data, including piezometric levels and chemistry, provide clear evidence that the shallow aquifers in the alluvium deposits direct geothermal outflow from Roosevelt Hot Springs to the west, down hydraulic gradient towards the middle of the North Milford Valley. Turning to the reservoir rocks, this slide shows data collected from cuttings and cores in well 5832 the first deep test well drilled in 2017. The stratigraphic sequence, ranging from 0 to 7,500 feet, is the log of drill chips, with drill core being obtained from intervals at around 6,800 feet and 7,450 feet. The images confirm lithologies that crop out in the Mineral Mountains, and the rocks range from true granite to diorite. 
Here are the stratigraphic sequences of wells 5832, 6832, and 7832 are shown side by side. And the top of the basement contact is marked based by the change in drill chip color. The photomicrographs on the far right are of samples near this contact showing evidence of intense shearing and cataclasis in the basement rocks. The cores and cuttings recovered from the most recent drilling efforts are currently being processed. From the mud logs, we see pretty consistent results with the addition of deep intercepts of Precambrian gneiss. We will be providing updates on new findings as soon as they become available. The endowment of fractures in the reservoir is important for stimulation and EGS development, and a 3D perspective on fracture distribution and orientation is gained from studies of outcrops in the Mineral Mountains, as shown here in this plan aerial view. As mentioned, the fractures are multidirectional, with clustering around three main orientations. Two form a conjugate set trending north-northwest to north-northeast, with one dipping near vertically and the other dipping at a shallow, shallow angle to the west. The third cluster of fractures trends east-west and dips vertically. The analysis of the FMI log from well 5832 shows similar fracture patterns in the EGS reservoir. The fracture populations are believed to be an intrinsic feature of uplift and exhumation of the mineral mountains, which commenced in the early Miocene. The sequence of events is illustrated in three panels from top to bottom, and these show the evolution of the range front fault system in terms of a rolling hinge. The top panel represents the onset of basin and range extension with the formation of a conjugate set of fractures in young plutonic rocks. The bold black vertical lines represent mafic dikes that are scattered through the mineral mountains, and these provide structural markers of, de of the deformation through time. The intermediate panel shows the nucleation of normal fault movement along a steep west dipping fracture plane, and the bottom panel shows how tectonic stretching across the North Milford Valley is accommodated by block uplift and clockwise rotation, accounting for the structural and stratigraphic relations around Utah Forge. Importantly, the contact between the basin fill and the underlying granitic basement has a structural or origin, and it is likely accompanied by subjacent and parallel planes of shear, consistent with the evidence of intense deformation seen in thin sections shown earlier. We believe that because of the shallow dip angle, cohesive forces have locked these fault planes, meaning that they are no longer active surfaces of slip. In the next two slides, a flavor of some of the new work that is in progress is presented. The first of these is the MT resistivity structure, which is being led by Phil Wanamaker. In this east-west slice down to 50 kilometers depth, the conductive elements demarcate stratigraphic relationships and show localization of high-level, structurally controlled hydrothermal fluid flow fed by deep-seated conductors that appear related to a magmatic plumbing system. Second, geochemical survey of groundwater wells shows the existence of a large mantle helium anomaly centered in the North Milford Valley, but which appears partially offset from the zone of strongest heat flow that encircles Utah Forge and Roosevelt Hot Springs. The internal patterns in helium-4 neon-20 suggest the existence of east-northeast, west-southwest trending structures. Because the helium anomaly lacks correlation with the compositional zoning of groundwater, there appear to be additional deep-seated fluid flow paths that transect the crust in the region. Stay tuned if you're interested in these new developments. 
In the last few slides, we turn to a look at the Utah Forge website, and the intention here is to guide researchers to relevant information. This is the home page, and for information on datasets, apps, and a link to the Geothermal Data Repository, follow the orange arrow and click on the Data Dashboard. That takes you to this page, where there are links to various types of information. For example, under Geoscience Tools, the Geoscientific Map is the link to an ArcGIS online map hosted and maintained by the Utah Geological Survey. Here you can look at various datasets from the project in a conventional ArcGIS format with layers that you can turn on and off. It also incorporates a 3D perspective. No, you do not need ArcGIS to run this app, as it is all web-based. Next, on the far left, under Seismic Monitoring, is the link to the University of Utah Seismograph Station's webpage that is dedicated to monitoring seismicity around the Utah Forge site. Here you will find up-to-date information about seismic activity and the locations of seismometers around the site. Over on the right, under Modeling, the link labeled Earth Model takes you to a page where the 3D attributes of the Utah Forge site and the subsurface can be visualized. This is a leapfrog application which Sequent is providing to the Utah Forge project, and the web page is hosted by the Idaho National Lab. This tool complements the ArcGIS online map tool, and combined they provide unique perspectives that are worth examining. The Data Dashboard also provides a link to the Geothermal Data Repository, which is hosted by the National Renewable Energy Lab, and this is where the project results are archived. Here you will find raw data sets and synoptic reports covering all the work up through to the present. The last item to direct your attention to is access through the drop-down menu. Click on Project and then open up Publications. Scroll down through this web page to find published findings. For example, you will find the link to the Utah Geological Survey Publication 169, which comprises 14 papers that cover various aspects of investigations up through early 2019. It is all open access and available online. It includes a revised geological map of the region surrounding Utah Forge that is the up-to-date reference on the subject. That brings us to the end of this brief update on the geoscience of Utah Forge. It covers just one facet of the project, and interested viewers are encouraged to explore the website for links to other datasets and reports. Utah Forge is sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy through the Geothermal Technologies Office. We'd like to thank them and our state and local government partners, along with Smithfield Foods and Pacific Corp, for their enthusiastic support and assistance with this project.